so 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 What's good, friends and family? Mr. Flip Flop here, aka Mr. Red Cup. What's good, friends and family? Mr. Flip Flop here uh, with a Sasua update, giving you guys the info, the proper info as you guys look for, rather than going on a live all the time and you asking the same questions over and over and over. As you guys uh, watch this video, if you're watching it this morning, you should all be getting ready for Sunday service at 11.30 a.m. And as you guys know, on Wednesdays, 8 p.m. Simp Talk. I'm back, better than ever, so here we go. I'm gonna give you the Sasua updates, as well as my story of me being in the hospital, so you guys can get an idea of what I went through and the situation, so stay tuned for the story, but first, the Sasua updates. As of now, the curfew has been extended, but starting Monday, the 28th, the weekday curfew from Monday to Friday will be 9 p.m. 9 p.m. On weekends, it is pushed back to 7 p.m. So right now, there's 20 more days of the curfew, which, if you guys don't understand, the state of emergency was 45 days. We still have 20 days left. So by October 18th, the state of emergency ends, and the curfew should end. Will they extend it? The exact words by the Minister of Health was, the cases are going down. If they stay down, Everything will be canceled out and we'll go back to normal. If the people start acting up again and start partying like crazy again and the cases go up, then we'll go back to another curfew, another state of emergency. So this is based on the locals. The tourist areas are, are pumping. Um, they're doing their best to get Punta Cana and Bavaro back. As you guys know, Sasu is jumping. Um, if you need help moving around during the curfew, come to Flip Flop. I'll give you the ins and outs and the outs and ins. As of now in Porta Plata, the Malacone is still closed. It's open until 3 p.m. on weekdays, meaning 3 p.m. You can chill out there until 3 p.m. But on weekends, it's closed 24 hours, Saturday and Sunday. That in, that in itself is to basically keep people from congregating because but, but since all the clubs are closed, the Malacone has gotten nuts. Now in Porta Plata, a few clubs have opened outside, so I will be checking those out uh, in the next couple weeks giving you guys info on what's going on in Porta Plata. But right now, the Malacone is shut down, uh, so you really can't go out there and hang out. Uh, the beaches are open. Certain rivers are open. But as of now, the curfew is extended. The date now is October 18th for the state of emergency to end and the curfew to end. So I'm going to say it one more time. The curfew as of now is 9 p.m. on weekdays, 7 p.m. on weekends. That's the curfew as of now. And also, for you guys that ask the same question over and over and over again, no, you do not need a PCR or COVID test to enter the country. They are, quote, unquote, doing random testing at the airport. So far, I don't know anybody that's gotten stopped since they started this, but you do not need a test to enter the country. And the president announced, if you get sick while you're here, you get 100% coverage in the public hospitals for free and any other things you need as far as changing your flight and um, hotel stays, et cetera, et cetera. I actually went through that process. I got free health care just recently. And now let me get into the story about my health scare. Welcome to Flip so in the last Simp Talk, I already told you guys all the rumors that was going on, that I had COVID, that I, had, I was on a ventilator, all that is untrue. So let me tell you exactly what happened with my health situation so you guys get an understanding of what I went through and what, in case you happen to go through it, what you can do for your, for your own uh, sake. Now, about three weeks ago, I started feeling real sick. And uh, I know me, I don't get sick very often. You know, you guys know I drink a lot, I have a good time. I get tired, I, I go to sleep, but I don't really get sick. So this day, I'm feeling like this day two, I'm kind of feeling out of it. I've been home, 
Uh, I said, let me go to the doctor because this feel, it feels weird, you know. So I go to the medical, which is the private hospital. And anytime you have medical, that's private. It costs money. Um, I get seen. I take the COVID test. It's negative. Now, when I take the COVID test and it's negative, I'm confused. Like, okay, what is, what is wrong with me? Um, the doctor says, hey, you have influenza. You have the flu. Go home. Uh, hydrate. Take these meds, blah, blah, blah. Cool. So I go home. About a week and a half, I'm going through it. I ain't gonna lie. The flu put me through it. I'm home. Um, that's why nobody has seen me. So a week, you know, if I'm sick, I'm gonna stay away from everybody, obviously. So a week and a half, I'm home just going through the motions. Flu's kicking my butt. I lost about eight pounds in a week. Uh, flu kicked my butt. So now I feel better. So now I go on a flip-flop. And one day, I'm there for about 30, 40 minutes. And I'm just feeling fatigued. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm super fatigued. So now... I said, like, two, two, three days, of, I'm feeling better, no more flu, I feel fine, but I'm just super fatigued. I'm there for 40 minutes, and I feel like I had been working, lifting boxes and crates of, of beer for like 10 hours. I'm just out of it. So I go home, I keep going back home. So two days in a row, I just go back home, I'm just out of it. Go lay down in my bed, I'm just, I'm just done. So the third day, I said, I'm actually supposed to be in my, my boy's villa, he, he got a villa for me, but I told him I apologize. Shout out to my boy, Don Pablo. I told him I apologize, I don't feel well. So I speak to my doctor friend from LA, shout out to Dr. Robert. Um, he comes down here, does free surgery with a bunch of surgeons. So I, I, I kind of talk to a lot of doctors. I've been dealing with doctors since I was a personal trainer and when I, had, uh, when I dealt with the mobile diagnostic company. So I have a lot of doctor friends. So I hit, hit two of my doctor friends up and I say, hey, I'm really fatigued. I just got over the flu, but now it's like I have no energy at all. So uh, Dr. Rob and my homeboy, El Mundo, he goes, listen, they go, listen, go to the emergency room in the medical. Don't go to, to, to consultation. Go to emergency early in the morning and get checked out. And these are the tests you need to tell them you need. He makes a phone call for me. They already set up for me to come. So I go there early in the morning, like six in the morning. Um, they take my blood test, put me on an IV. Then later on, give me a, a, a CAT scan. I kept saying sonogram, but it's a CAT scan. They say sonogram. Um, a CAT scan. So now as I'm sitting waiting for the doctors to come, like four doctors come in. They go, we don't understand something. You don't, you're negative for COVID, but your chest scan is horrible. Do you smoke? I said, no, I don't smoke. Maybe in a cigar once a month now, you know, I don't know. Um, they's like, your lungs are black. So I see that I actually have the scan here in my house. I see the scan and my lungs are black. And I'm like, but I feel fine. I, they're like, you have no symptoms. You don't, you feel okay. I said, I feel fine. I'm just tired. So they go, you have advanced pneumonia. We're going to admit you. Now, the problem with the medical is everything is money. So before I took any test, I gave them a deposit of 10,000 pesos, which was cool. I figured I'd give them a deposit. They'll bill me, charge me later. Not the case. Now, as I got that 10,000 pesos, all the tests I took, it was three tests, and the IV ended up being like 7,000. So I had 3,000 pesos left. They're actually telling me what I got left. I'm like, well, I think, I'm thinking they're going to bill me. It's my fault I let my insurance lapse, so that's on me. I actually am gonna redo my insurance this week. I let it lapse, it was my fault. I didn't even realize I let it lapse. So, the medical goes, the people come, and now they won't do anything until they get money. So now, they ask for another 8,000 pesos. Cool, I got some cash on me. I actually came outside with some cash because I figured things would cost, but I didn't know it was gonna be like this. So, another 8,000 pesos. Now, they're getting the bed ready for me. I'm like, oh, but still no meds, still no meds. I'm sitting there wondering why I've been here for hours since six in the morning. Now it's like one in the afternoon. I still got no meds. If I'm so bad, you should be rushing me to give me meds. So then I actually bump into a friend of mine and she starts translating for me because when it comes to specifics, I like to understand perfectly, you know, business as well. When it comes to certain specifics and certain situations, I want to make sure I understand everything. So now she speaks English, so she's talking for me. One of the nurses speaks English too, but they're talking to the billing person. Now, mind you, I'm in the hospital and I'm dealing with a billing person more than I'm dealing with the nurse and the doctor, which is weird to me. So the billing person is saying, we're going to need $1,000 a day. I'm like, what? Now, the billing person is even looking at me, trying to hint to me, no, don't pay it. I, this is my job. I have to tell you this, but don't pay it. So they, she's, she's giving me hints. Like, don't pay the $1,000. It's not worth it because they're going to keep charging you everything. And I'm like, $1,000? That doesn't even cost that in the States. Like, you know, and, and as far as I know, especially what my doctor friends told me, 
pneumonia medicine is super cheap. It, it's a lot to get out of your system, but the meds are like super cheap. As I just got my meds just recently when I got to the hospital. So anyway, I'm speaking. I'm like, no, I'm not paying that. Like, that's ridiculous. Y'all could keep me here 10 days and get $10,000 out of me. Like, that'd be, that'd be nuts. Like, that's, that's insane. So I asked them to transfer me. There's a COVID facility in, um, in uh, Puerto Plata. Now, I don't have COVID, but I can go to the facility since I have pneumonia. But the facility's empty. There's no patients there. So I go, well, what is my next step? One of the girls starts talking, and they go, listen, you can go to the hospital down the block. Transfer to the hospital. It's free. You can go in the, in, in the isolation center, the ICU, and get treated. You don't have COVID, but you can get treated like you have COVID because you have pneumonia, and it still is just as dangerous. And you're an American. I'm like, cool, okay. So now they want me to take an ambulance. They want $1,000 for the ambulance. And I swear to God, the ambulance ride is only seven minutes. I'm seven minutes away from the hospital. And they want $1,000 for a seven-minute ride. Luckily, my homegirl has a car. I go, hey, do you mind? She goes, no, I'm going to take you. I already told the doctor I'm going to take you because that's ridiculous what they're trying to do to you. They sign me out, give me my, uh, my, my CAT scan of my lungs. They call ahead, make sure I got a bed in the hospital, in the isolation center. They bring me over there. Boom. I, gotta, I get thrown in a closet. It was basically a closet with a, with a bed in it. Um, they make me wait. And they said the bed's getting ready, blah, blah, blah. So now I go to the isolation center, which is like a COVID isolation center in the hospital. Now, it's 14 rooms. There's like four people. I'm the fifth person. So basically, I'm seeing that, speaking of nurses as well, there's not a lot of COVID cases in the hospitals. Um, they send people home if they're healthy, tell them to isolate. But for the most part, it's people that are really bad or really, every, everyone was elderly in the section I was in. I was the youngest person, but I had pneumonia. Now, I'm isolated um, in a big ass room by myself. They only come in to give me meds. They pump me full of meds, um, take my pulse, take my blood pressure, take blood once a day, uh, take my sugar every morning. So that's the only time I see people is about three times a day, maybe four times a day. They walk in, otherwise I'm in the room by myself, on my phone, playing games on my other phone, on YouTube, okay? So I'm basically isolated. I order food out. I, I, I eat at all these restaurants. Like I said, shout out to Mike from Anvy. He came all the way to Porta Plata, brought me uh, fried lobster and shrimp pasta and some chocolate cakes and shout out to him. So I was just eating, eating out. I had got my appetite back. I felt great. So now the doctors keep coming in and there's two, two doctors. One of them is really cool. And she's like, listen, you have no fever. You have no symptoms, but you're really, your lungs are really bad. So now three days later, I get another CAT scan. And they said, you're doing better, but you're still bad. So now five days in, I'm tight. I want to go home. I'm like, listen, I could do the same thing in this hospital I'm doing home. All y'all doing is pumping me full of antibiotics. I could take those antibiotics at home. I'm like, I want to leave. So the doctor goes and gets one of them. The doctor speaks a little bit of English, but she goes and gets the main nurse who speaks perfect English. So they come back in, and I have a coming to Jesus moment. I'm going to be honest with you. And it was type scary as well to hear these words. But the doctor basically said it like this. You're really lucky. You're super lucky. You have no symptoms. You have no fever. You feel fine, right? I'm like, yeah, I feel fine. Like, why, why should I stay here and I feel fine? I can go home and take these meds. She said, if I let you go, I will not give you any help because you can go home and you can die in a couple of days. I'm like, what? She's basically like, this pneumonia is so advanced that you can go home and your lungs can collapse and you can die. So now I'm sitting there listening to this like, what the hell? I could die? Like, I feel fine. She goes, you're lucky. She goes, most people in your situation with your lung scans would be on a ventilator right now, would be gasping for air right now. She said, I don't know how you're breathing so normally right now. They, they, they kept checking me for my, for my oxygen levels and everything. She said, I don't know how you're breathing so good right now, but your lungs are crap. You, you, you look like you're about to die. And I'm like, okay, I guess I'll sit in the hospital some more. So um, as you guys saw in the videos I did, I, I, I feel fine. You know, I'm basically the same person. Uh, but I had to come in a Jesus moment because she basically told me, like, you can go home and die. So this one doctor, you know, we got cool because she was honest with me. She's like, listen, if you go home, my hand, I wash my hands of it because I don't know what's going to happen when you go home. So now day seven, the doctor's like, listen, I got two scans back to back. They say, you're looking really good. Not, not out of the water yet, but you're looking very, very, very good. So what ends up happening is uh, I get out. 
And she comes in. It's the happiest day of my life. She goes, hey, you're going home. You're still not out of the water. You're going home now. We got to give you these meds. What you have to do is stay away from a lot of people because their bacteria can get in your lungs and make it worse. So for right now, I've got to be kind of just backed away from people for a while because I still have the pneumonia and they don't want me to get worse as far as the uh, bacteria in my lungs goes. So they sent me home, gave me a bunch of meds. I got a bunch of antibiotics, a bunch of meds I got to take. Um, and basically, I just got to chill. You know what I'm saying? Uh, no big crowds. Uh, mask on, obviously. Basically, to protect, I'm, I'm, I got to protect myself from everybody else because if I get more bacteria in my lungs, my lungs can get worse and I end up back in the hospital. You know, she really broke it down to me. She basically said, your lungs are bad until you're, I got to go back in 21 days for a, uh, another CAT scan to just see if it's all cleared out. But, but she said it's basically good enough right now to, um, you know, I can be home. So as of now, I'm feeling great, feeling good. Trying to get back to normal, getting ready for Halloween, y'all. But uh, that's the story. Uh, the hospital gave me great service. They gave me, they treated me amazing. Um, everything was free for now, you know what I'm saying, uh, based on the president's thing. But uh, like I said, I had pneumonia. Like you heard all the rumors, I did not have COVID. Uh, I was not on a ventilator. But I feel great, getting better every day. And um, hopefully I'll see you guys soon. Stay tuned for more. Hasta luego. 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 H